I just wanna stay bad, stay mad Shit by my shoulder cause they treat me like an outcast I ain't gonna take that, stay back I'll be swinging on till the hits come in all caps I ain't gonna lay back, pray that someone's gonna help me Ain't nobody like that Hey everybody out there, uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, thank you for tuning in and subscribing. Uh, we appreciate that a whole bunch, but let's get right into it today. So uh, today for our Improving Engine Performance series, we're gonna be talking about rod bearings. Now in the previous video you have seen where we tore down the short block of our Hemi, we, saw, we were saying in there that we could see some wear and copper area right on the edges of all of the rod bearings, and they happen to be the side that was going up against the radius uh, or closest to the crankshaft. Now, uh, the radius of a crankshaft is so the journal and where your counterweight come down. Um, you can't have a direct 90 degree like that. You have to have a little bit of a radius in there to give it some strength. Otherwise, you have a really good spot for that to crack. So, going on, going forward with that, we are going to talk about uh, narrowing bearings. Uh, we're also going to explain a little bit on the Clevite Mall bearings uh, for rod bearings what all of the numbers on here kind of mean. We're gonna show you that, and then we're gonna jump right back and go over our plan on how we're gonna narrow these bearings up. All right, hey guys. Uh, so jumping in here with the Clevite Mall bearings, and specifically we're gonna be talking about the rod bearings. And these are just gonna be like the letters you're gonna see on the side and what they mean. So we're gonna just rifle through these and I'm gonna pop them up on the screen right here. Uh, so a P bearing is going to be just your standard Clevite 77 tri-metal bearing. Um, and then if you see an H, that's going to be their high performance bearing. That was designed around NASCAR stuff back in the, probably like the 80s. Um, the K on there is going to be for coating. That's their tri-armor coated bearing. Why they went with K instead of a C, I can't tell you, but uh, that's what it is. Uh, D is going to be uh, f or a rod bearing that has a dowel hole like we run on our aluminum rods here. Uh, the N is going to be for a narrowed bearing and that's going to be giving you a uh, greater crankshaft fillet clearance on there, uh, but that's kind of what we're running into the issue with and you'll see that in a moment. Um, G is for a grooved bearing that's going to have a groove pretty much all the way around. Um, v is the high performance with lead on it. Uh, the X bearing is going to be a one thou more uh, clearance. Then they do have an XX. You can kind of stack everything on there. And so that's going to be a two thou more. Um, and then an A or an AL is going to be an aluminum bearing material. Now you can stack a lot of these things together. So you can have like an H uh, and an N and a D. So that's going to be a high performance narrow uh, with dowel hole on it. So, uh, but let's go ahead and jump back in hopefully that uh, clears up a couple of things for you on the clevite mall uh, rod bearings all right so now that you guys kind of understand what the bearing numbers and lettering means uh for the clevite malls now these are very common to use in any uh, race application there uh, a lot of people you can actually buy just the tops and just bottoms for like your mains and rods and such like that uh when it comes to the hemi stuff so uh, we are using a CB527 HND-10. Uh, the dash 10 is 10 under, thusly why we have a very large uh, radius on there. So we're going to go ahead and open these ones up, and we're going to show you a little side-by-side -side real quick. We're going to stack them on top of each other. There we go. And we'll get up nice and close so you guys can see it real good. Now you can see there's the copper on the top one right on the edge, and then obviously the new one, nothing. So this narrowed bearing uh, for our radius uh, in the crank is not going to work. Now, uh, what's the plan on this? Well, the way that I have narrowed bearings in the past is we will use a rod and we're basically gonna sacrifice one to the uh, powers that be. We're not gonna sacrifice this one. This is actually a, uh, a good lower runs rod that we can continue to use. Um, so we'll set that one aside, but we do have an old R&R rod and we're gonna be using a big old chunk of aluminum. Now, what do we, what's the plan on that? Well, basically, uh, we'll go real quick through the plan. We're gonna be putting this up in the lathe and turning it down to just smaller than the inside diameter of the bearings. Uh, not the crank diameter because we have oil clearance. We actually wanna be just slightly smaller than what the inside diameter of uh, the bearing inside the rod is, okay? That way we can actually take and we'll put a little piece of tape all the way around that. So when we clamp down on it, we're not going to hurt the bearings. Now, how are we going to clamp down on that? Well, we're going to sacrifice this R&R &R rod. We're going to saw it off right here. And then we're going to be able to put it in the lathe. 
um, and narrow the rod up itself. Then when we put the bearing in there, it's going to stick out and we'll be able to cut it right off. And then we only have, you know, two sets, three sets to do. That way we don't have to do them in the middle of the season. So let's go ahead and get over on the lathe and get this done. Okay, so over on the lathe now. Um, I swapped to a different piece of uh, material because after measuring the uh, diameter of my chunk of aluminum that I had and then doing the math of how much I had to turn down off of it, this one's already been turned down a little bit, so it's gonna save me just a little bit more time. So uh, we're gonna use the three jaw chuck because it's already here. A lot of times I would use a four jaw so I can dial it in exactly perfect, but since we have to take so much off, it's already going to be nice and true. So we're gonna run it that way. And I have a bunch of these blocks laying around that I bought uh, for scrap price and everything. So I don't mind uh, killing one if it's off a little bit. So uh, the, in, uh, the diameter we're gonna be looking for is 2.370, all right? Um, and if we're under it just a little bit, uh, you know, that's gonna be fine. The tape that we're gonna use, which is gonna be basically a, a green painter's tape, um, we'll be able to uh, take up that little bit and give us a squish and a nice bite on that. Um, and we need to have it about three quarters of an inch thick. That's going to leave enough where we're not going to ruin the bearing hanging off of there. But at the same time, uh, it's gonna give us stuff where we have good bite. And since we're gonna be bringing this ledge down so much, it's gonna stay nice and square to this. So we're gonna get it up in here. We're gonna get up to our three quarter and we're gonna start turning down um, everything that's from three quarter to where we already have and then get it down to our nominal size. So let's get started for that. Um, I'll probably show you guys some of it and then I'll uh, bring you back in when I'm doing the final cut because this is going to take a bit. take a look uh, this should put us probably right around 15 10 to 15 thou oversize uh, but this has gotten very warm because we've taken off almost a little over half of an inch uh, from the total diameter so that's gonna get pretty warm on there and aluminum is gonna expand so let's take a look at where we're at we're shooting for 2.370 and we are at 2.387 so about uh, 17 thou big. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this cool down just a little bit and uh, clean up all of this aluminum stuff. That way we don't have anything that could possibly, you know, hit inside our bearings. And then we'll uh, hit this to the final size and start getting the rods up in there. And now that this is cooled down, it's still a little warm, but I can put my hand on it and I'm fine, so. All right, let's take a look. And we cooled down by about three thousandths of an inch. So we're at like a 2.386. So that means we have 16 thousandths of an inch uh, until we are gonna be at our uh, size that we need to be. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take a 10 thou cut, which means on here is only gonna be five, because every time we take five off of here, that's also five that it's taken off of this side. If you take five here, that means it got smaller over here. That's gonna take 10 total. We're only gonna take 10 so we can make sure we don't have any discrepancies, anything like that. If a chip were to get in here and cause an issue, anything like that. And then we can always come back and take those last little bits and get it exactly on. So let's go ahead and finish that up. So we took it back out of there because this machine has maybe a little bit, half a thou to a thou of deflection that can happen in it. It's got a lot of different bolts and pieces holding everything together. So we brought it in and then we slowly brought it back out because of that little bit of deflection that took off that little electric strip. Let's see where we're at. Oh, look at that. We still got a little bit to take off. We still have about five to six thousandths to take off. Two point three seven zero five, so we're half a thou off. I'll probably just run a uh, Scotch Brite or a uh, little bit of emery cloth over this, just make sure it's nice and smooth. Back over here, we got it taped up, and I've got a rod over here, uh, or our cut rod over here, with a old bearing in it. Uh, as you see, we don't tape all the way around this. Um, we're just trying to get it to where the bearing's going to be, and then we also know exactly 
uh, which way we're gonna be putting it on every time. Let's go ahead and get the uh, rod up in here, or the rod end with bearing, and we're gonna go ahead and then start facing that rod down until we clean up the, uh, the copper of the bearing. Then we know we're gonna be good, and we can go ahead and do all the others, and it's already gonna be cut for us. Set that to uh, about four or five Ugga Duggas on your Milwaukee. down I just started to touch the bearing just right there um, so I stopped I'm going to show you guys and now I'm seeing we may run into another slight issue easily fixable but excuse me the, uh, the rod bolts see if you can possibly see right here we're, we're getting into where the, uh, the pocket is that the, uh, the head of the uh, cap screw goes in there what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just continue to machine everything that we need to and then when I'm done, I can turn this down, um, grind it down, whatever I need to, to make that head smaller, so that we don't have to worry about it. But uh, I know from right here, we have right about 40 thousandths of an inch that we need to take off. So I'm gonna go ahead, uh, and I'm gonna take probably maybe a 10 thou cut here, and uh, just take it nice and easy, and make sure everything is gonna be good. Well, we can definitely smell it right now. You can definitely smell the uh, that little bit of oil impregnation that's been on these bearings before. But it did cut all the way around like that. Um, and we still have, you know, probably two thirds to three quarters of the, uh, the worn away area left. Uh, we did break through right here and we could actually, I could hear it hitting the rod bolt right here and it's clearancing it right there. And we're about to break through on this one. <laughs> There we see all the copper is already gone. So I'm gonna go ahead, clean this up, and uh, we're gonna do another used bearing in here just to verify everything is good before we put our good bearings in there. I'm gonna go ahead and take care of these rod bolts as well. All right, so I cut another one off camera and it turned out great. So we're gonna go ahead and do a brand new bearing. Put it up in here, go ahead and narrow it, and then we'll do a quick cleanup of it and throw it in one of our good rods and show you exactly what the final product's gonna look like. Try to hold this close here, but if you guys see, there we go. The bearing is actually sticking up past it right now, and that's all we're doing is we're gonna come to this way from the inside, touch it until we'll actually watch it just barely kiss the aluminum here, and then we're gonna stop. And that's all it is. Now back over here, there's our bearing box still. Um, the rod that we narrowed. And then we have one of the rods that came out of the engine we just we just tore apart. I went ahead and I cleaned the, the edges here. Uh, if you do try this at home or in your own shop or anything, uh, understand that there might be a little bit of a, an edge or a burr here and you're gonna have to clean that up. If you don't clean that up, you're gonna have issues. Um, and possibly start to start taking out uh, crankshafts and, and you'll score it up. And it could get expensive real quick. So um, I like to just take a, a, a small diamond file um, on the back side and then very carefully on the bearing side here. And then I actually have a piece of uh, machined and uh, honed steel that I have about a 600 to 800 grit sandpaper that's a sticky back on it. Put that on there and I will actually sand it down nice and smooth so that way everything is the way it should be or if you look at the other side you want it to kind of feel the same way so let's go ahead and throw it in here and show you guys exactly uh what our clearance is going to look like now there we go let's get nice and close i'll try to zoom in on that but you can see the 
before we were hanging off of this edge, how we have our bevel here coming up and we're actually hanging off the edge. Now we're actually nice inside that, nice and clean, um, and we're not going to be running into the crankshaft and possibly hurting our crankshaft anymore. Um, this is also going to help to make sure that uh, you know we don't have uh, anything running into the crank, causing extra friction or anything there, which if we start getting too much friction on that bearing on the edge there, we can actually start putting heat in it and then take out a rod bearing, and it might not be the bearing's fault at all, it could be ours. So there we have it guys. Um, I'd love to sit here and show you all of them, but uh, I got a bunch of these left to do. Um, thank you guys for watching and subscribing. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and this is just one way to narrow a set of bearings. Um, if you have another way that you've done it before, tell me about it down in the comments. I'd love to hear uh, what other people are doing to solve this same issue. Uh, make sure you visit the website, www.badinfluencegarage.com, and um, until next time, guys, be safe out there. In my veins, I've been driving this train Years in this lane, there's no stopping this flame Cause I came to the game and I changed it to play How I like rearranged it to my own domain Yeah, I got what it takes, made lots of mistakes Taking shots, skipping breaks, feeling lost feeling